Shabbat Shalom, once again. Shalom. This time we get to hear from the great Kahan, Benjamin Ilya Hawkins. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, saints of Yahweh. We barely made it again. <laughs> you may be seated. Praise Yahweh. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Got a lot on my plate and a short time to get there. Let me look at the clock, okay? Uh, it's great to be back at the crib. You know, the don donkeys know their owner's crib, right? P praise Yahweh, and I hope uh, Yahweh blesses your understanding uh, greatly. Now, a couple of weeks ago, our pastor, the greatest teacher in the world, the great Kahan Israel Bahakins, gave a sermon on 629. Uh, and he mentioned uh, something that took place on that day. If you notice on the calendar, on the House of Yahweh calendar, that the Vatican issued a directive that the Catholics are no longer to use the name Yahweh. Uh, but the House of Yahweh, did we follow that commandment? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no. But that was what he was alluding to that occurred on that day, is uh, this law that was passed against opposed to our great father Yahweh in his in his in his house now I also also wanted to make mention of last week's sermon I was really appreciative of learning about that shaggy and scooby thing uh, you know you notice also they they drove the mystery machine the mystery machine it must have came from the Vatican right must have been a Vatican van okay so you're supposed to laugh huh? We got to get one of those applaud lights out here or something. Okay, so uh, let me start out by showing you a, a, by now a picture that everybody should pretty much have uh, seen. If we could dim the lights in the front, possibly. Let me uh, zoom out a little, because you really don't need to zoom in to see the details of this picture. But I know on the big screen out here, it's kind of hard to see. But can everybody see pretty well? Okay, and everybody sees who that is, right? Okay, great. There's no mis m misunderstandings about who's represented there. But we're going to go over this nebula today because when Pastor gave that sermon on 629, and he mentioned Zakaria 3.1. Let's turn over to Zakaria 3.1 real quick. I can read in the dark. Pastor's taught me how to read in the dark. He told us we needed to learn how to... Uh, before I look, show you this nebula... Zechariah 3 1, Pastor was hitting on this scripture here on page 718 where it says, Then he showed me Yahshua, the high priest, standing before the Moloch of Yahweh, with Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Now, when Pastor read that, you know, it, it didn't really click in my mind till maybe about an hour after the sermon. I said, I've seen that somewhere before. I've seen that somewhere before. Uh, an actual visual of that. And that's when it came into my mind about this nebula. And sure enough, now I want you to notice some details on this nebula here. Let's see if I can... Of course you see our great ruler here on the left side of our high priest here. You can see he's on the left. And... Up above them, you see the Roman soldier, which would be to the right side, okay? And as you notice in Zechariah 3.1, you first of all, you see Yahshua before, in front of the overseer, and then you see Satan, or the satanic system, this beastly system, the Roman Empire, this fourth kingdom, at the right to oppose, and we're going to be talking about this opposition and what this means. Now I want you to show you something else that you haven't seen. Okay, okay. I want to try to zero in on a little something here that I haven't shown you yet, but behind the Roman soldier you'll see a Pope's mitre right there. That's one of those Pope's hats, okay? Over here, you see a man sitting on a throne with a gold hat. That's a pope. One of the older pictures of the popes. And right here, you see, you'll see, a, you'll see his white collar here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. 
but you see a Catholic priest creeping or peeking behind that cloud right there. You can see his face. In fact, that's the first face I saw when I looked at the nebula. I saw that face first and that priest collar right there. Okay, which shows you who's behind this system. Who's behind this fourth beast. The culmination of all the others before. Turn over to Daniel, if we can turn the lights back on real quick. Let's turn over to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, found on page 672. And I want to look at verse 20. Remember, this is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and he asked the wise men to tell him what he dreamed and then give him the interpretation. None of them could do it but Daniel. Because secrets are only revealed at the house of Yahweh by Yahweh the, and by our greatest teacher, the great Kohan Israel Abel Hawkins, in these last days. But Daniel had the interpretation of the dream. In verse 20, it says, Daniel spoke and said, Blessed, I think I have the wrong verse. Let's see. Daniel 2.28? Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, 2.28. But there's a Father in heaven who reveals secrets and makes known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what will be in the latter days. Remember, the latter days. This is what this is focusing on. Go over to verse 34. He said, he's telling the king, you watched while a stone, which was cut out without hands, struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Now skip down to verse 35. Who's this them that he's talking about? Remember, he was shown an image. Remember, that had the gold head. It says, then the iron, the clay, the bronze, and the silver and the gold were broken to pieces at the same time. At the same time. That means that these kingdoms are all still in existence. And this last, it's a, this, this picture here in this nebula of this Roman soldier, this Roman Empire, the Roman Empire has just sucked all the other ones in, and this is why you see just that Roman soldier there. By the way, notice that he has that plume over his head, just like the Roman soldiers have on their helmet, that red plume, which by the way, if you look up that red plume, it was made out of red dyed horse hair. And it's interesting that it was made out of horse hair, and this is called the horse head nebula, right? Of course, that's just the coincidence too, I'm sure. And I'm sure that some of us creeped into the NASA laboratories or the, the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and we secretly put that picture in there, right? That's some of the allegations I'm hearing now that we have those kind of connections. I'll tell you, I'd sure like to, but we don't. Okay, we didn't make that picture. That, in fact, if you look on the internet now, that picture is everywhere on the internet. In fact, when I typed in Horsehead Nebula, that picture came up. That's the picture they're using on Wikipedia right there with our great pastor and overseer and, and our great high priest, Yahshua. Now, remember, these, these kingdoms, I want to talk about this for a minute because this is all that one image, those four kingdoms. And... Also, I'd, I did want to quickly mention that you notice that uh, pastor on the left here, and remember what he's, he taught us, you know, the unfolding of these prophecies is what's helped us to, put, to make any sense out of this. Do you think the world could look at that and make any sense out of that picture? Of course not. You would have to know the prophecies and everything that had been taught by the house of Yahweh to make any sense of it. When I looked at that picture and I saw pastor on the left side of that of, of Yahshua, I knew who, who that man was in front of him automatically because of his position. Notice here, Yahweh, Yisrael, Yahshua, right? Okay. Now, Isaiah 41, 8 through 13, you can write that down for your notes. Isaiah 41, 8 through 13, where he says, I'm going to take you by the right hand. He's talking about pastor. And then, of course, we know Yahshua is sitting at the right hand of Yahweh. All right, now, uh, this word opposed, you know, let, let's go over to Daniel 7.25 real quick. Uh, remember, now, I've got to show you something else before we go there. Notice that Pastor and Yahshua are facing the West. The Roman soldier is facing the opposite direction. Well, that's interesting because he's facing East. And remember, East means the beginning. And in the beginning, 
is when those four kingdoms, well, you know, the four kingdoms that Daniel spoke of that from his time period, that there's only been four world ruling kingdoms. We're going to be getting into that in a minute too, but notice that he's totally in opposition to them. He's looking the exact opposite direction as they are. They're moving forward because they're the future. This kingdom is crumbling and it's about to completely uh, disintegrate, okay? Because we're whacking it at the feet right now with the teachings of the house of Yahweh. And we're going to break those, those toes there. So now, look at uh, uh, Genesis 10.9. I think we better start there. Genesis 10.9. Because remember, this Nimrod system. I want to read you something that, that's in a side note there. But on page 7, Genesis 10.9, it says, He was a tyrant who deceived who turned against Yahweh. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the tyrant who deceived, who turned against Yahweh. Now, let's read the side note, R1. It said, Nimrod ensnared the minds of the people with his words, misleading them to rebel against Yahweh. Notice this, you know, when we use the word against, if you knew the depths of Satan and what this against actually means, you could give... 10,000 sermons on that alone, on that word right there, about this opposition that this, this uh, beastly system is bringing against the house of Yahweh at this time. Now, I'm going to read, uh, let's read Daniel 7.25 real quick before I read out of this book. Um, Daniel 7.25, and it's found on page, uh, I'll tell you when I get there. Daniel 7.25 on page uh, 6.79, it says, And he will speak great words, this little horn. Remember who's behind this system here. You see the Pope's mitre right there. You see the Pope here on his throne. And you see that Catholic priest peeking out at you right there. Very insidiously peeking out of that cloud there. And we're going to talk about that word because it ties into this. But he says, he will speak great words against Yahweh and will wear out, mentally attack, the cause to fall away, the saints of Yahweh, and think to change Yahweh's... Think to change, okay? You can't really change Yahweh's laws, but you can do it in the minds of the people by fooling them with these, this trickery that they've, that they've come up with. Okay, now, I'm going to read to you from... There is someone out there. Okay, on page nine, uh, pastor has declared the end from the beginning and his writings, everything's in here. It's in the books. It's in the books, Israel. Remember, it's in the books. It's all in here. If you go back and study these books, everything that we're bringing out right here today is already here in this book on page nine. In fact, this first chapter is dedicated to uh, the Roman system. He says that's undeniable proof of prophecy being fulfilled. The prophecies of Rome. There's never been another empire after the Roman Empire, and there won't be. They're going to try, but it's not going to occur. Okay, you've got to believe these prophecies. But on page 9, he talks about uh, this opposition. And he says... Uh, this prophecy showing the Roman Catholic Church would establish many laws in opposition to Yahweh's laws has been fulfilled. The world today is a witness to the fact that the Roman Catholic Church changed Yahweh's seventh day, Saturday, Sabbath to Sunday. And then he talks about the word uh, opposed. He says the word against in this verse comes from the Hebrew word zod. And it expresses every idea of opposition. I want you to listen to these definitions. That which is insidious, artful, double, sly, opposed, adverse, deceitful, seductive. And I looked up some of these words like insidious, which means working and spreading harmfully, working and spreading harmfully in a subtle or stealthy manner. A subtle or stealthy manner. Kind of like what the great deacon showed us about that stealth bomber. That they stealthily go in and destroy lives and property. This is part of that stealth, okay? This stealthy, sneaky, insidious, just like you see here, this guy, this, 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 this priest insidiously peeking out there. 
trying to be, uh, you know, trying not to uh, maybe be seen, I guess. But we know who's behind this. We know who this system is. Now, it also says uh, it means treacherous or intended to entrap. That word treacherous means beguiling but harmful and alluring. You know, like this music and this, this entertainment of the world that we've been hearing about. This is very treacherous and deceitful and alluring. It's alluring to your mind, but it's destroying your mind if, you'll, if you're listening to it. Tune it out. Get rid of it. Get it out of your life completely. It is an opposition against Yahweh, and you will die and burn in hell if you don't turn it off and leave it alone. I'm not talking about when you're out and about in the world and you hear the music playing in the background. Hey, you can't help that. But in the privacy of your own home or your car or whatever, don't fall into this trap. This is a trap. It means beguiling but harmful, alluring. And it's from the Latin word, this word insidious is from Latin insidia, which means ambush. Turn over to Proverbs 12. Turn over to Proverbs chapter 12 on page 503. Proverbs chapter 12. We're going to read verse 6. It says the words or the laws, these laws that are being passed, these songs that they're singing and they're putting lyrics into, these movies that they're writing scripts in, or whatever words that are in opposition against Yahweh, you know, you can make it really simple. If it didn't come from Abel, it ain't, it ain't occurring. <laughs> okay? If it didn't come from here, it's God worship. It's God worship. There's going to be a mixture in there. You should know that. We should know based on what we've been taught. It says the words of the wicked, the lawless, that word wicked means lawless, the words of the wicked ambush for blood. Yes, they want to destroy your life. This kingdom, this, this soldier, I want you to notice something else about this soldier. Um, if you'll notice, there is a river of blood <laughs> flowing from this Roman system. If you notice, there's a river of blood <laughs> running from this system. The, remember what Yahshua said. They are responsible for all the bloodshed that's been shed. All the righteous saints. They're responsible for this. It's them that are responsible. But He says, the words of the wicked ambush for blood, but the speech of the upright delivers them. The speech of the house of Yahweh, the peaceful solution character education program is what's going to deliver them from the bondage of corruption and sin that they've fallen into. It's a trap. Remember, they're being entrapped. They're being ambushed. They don't even see. If, if you knew there was a trap, would you step on it? No, that's why awareness is so important. That's why education, getting all the facts, making sure they're correct before you decide is life-saving. Because if you know the, the trap's been laid, you can avoid the trap. Nobody, nobody purposely falls and in, goes into a trap unless they just want to be purposely ensnared. Okay, now also along those lines, turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I have to speed it up. Not that I wasn't already speeding. Okay, uh, Ephesians 4. Uh, just give me just a second. 4.14, found on page 9.18. And he talks along the same lines. He says, no longer are we, the house of Yahweh members, to be children. Now that doesn't mean you're... Remember in another scripture he says that we should become like children. We should be like little children. What he's talking about is not in being ensnared by these things. We have been taught by the greatest teacher on the face of the earth and the peaceful solution, all these things have been laid out in front of us. We're showed the other side of the coin that this system will not show the people. By the way, if you haven't read this newest, this latest prophetic word magazine, you're missing out on some great information because they are not... Let me, in fact, let me read you just real quickly here something that Pastor said in here that in order for the people, in order for the people to really make a choice I, I, I couldn't find my place, but in, in order for the people to truly make a choice, you got to show them both sides of the coin. <laughs> the people are only being told that homosexuality is now lawful, which, by the way, that is the most grievous sin you could pass against Yahweh. 
That is the most grievous thing that they could have passed against Yahweh. Taking out his name, changing the Sabbath, and now this. In opposition, complete opposition against what we're trying to do. That's all it is. Now remember, it's character building. (laughs) This is for our benefit. This system that was set up here is to build our character. Okay, It's opposition that we have to face to show Yahweh that we want to overcome Yahweh. We want to overcome these things willingly, uh, tie, tether ourselves to the chosen branch and willingly overcome these things. Okay, And that's why we're all here sitting here in the sanctuary today and we're in the outlying areas watching this, this program. But this is the most grievous sin. And it says, No longer are we to be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive. They're lying in wait, in ambush, to ambush you. But why should you be ambushed when you have been taught by the greatest teacher in the world at the burning bush? <laughs> you know? Uh, come on. We, 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 the information that we've been given, that we have in front of us, it's, it's just incredible. We can't even keep up with it. It's just amazing. I don't know how we haven't, anyone here would have time to read anything outside of the publications of this great house. <laughs> this, this is uh, just the greatest, most exciting uh, information. Now, turn over to Ephesians 6.13, just a couple pages over, because I want to encourage you. He says on page 920, Therefore, take up the whole armor. I, no- I notice it's in Ephesians 6.13. 6.13, okay? So you can remember it very easy. Take up the whole armor of Yahweh. Don't take up this armor. By the way, you see this Roman soldier, his helmet? Just a couple days later on the Daily Mail, notice the gold band there just like you see over here? Okay? Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Uh, But that was, by the way, i got to show you this article. This came out, the great Kohan that was working with me on this, pointed this out to me, but this came out on April 21st, 2013, just two days at one day after we spotted the nebula in the sky. This article came out on the Daily Mail online, and it says, when in Rome, the eternal city takes a step back in time as it celebrates its 2,766th birthday. And it says, notice here, Uh, held in Rome's birthplace amid seven hills, okay? They know this in their own writings, in their own newspaper articles. They're having this celebration of the 2,766th birthday of the city of Rome. By the way, look up the word number 2,766 in Strong's, and it means Kareem, utter destruction, devoted to destruction, devoted to destruction, and maybe someday we'll, we'll hear more about that. From, I'm sure we're going to be hearing all about all of this. Uh, and it's going to be explained in detail. But this system, uh, this beastly system, remember, we're not going to beat it by going out with bombs and guns and threats and anything like that. What we're going to do is we're going to teach the peaceful solution and we're going to, we're going to, whack, it up. We're going to whack it down by the feet. And this image is going, to, this is going to take place. Make sure you're... Do not have a doubt. Does anybody here have a doubt in their mind right now? No. Praise Yahweh. Well, praise Yahweh. Keep, keep up the zeal. And at this time, it is my great privilege and opportunity to turn it over to the great Kohan Ilya Hawkins. Praise Yahweh. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Everyone may be seated. Now, continuing where the great Kahan Benjamin left off, and speaking of these clouds and this nebula that was seen uh, in April of this year, and of course, nebula, as Pastor has brought out, and the great Kahan Benjamin also brought out, nebula is a Latin word for cloud. So we're still seeing these things in the clouds, just as we were told to look up for these things. And, and remember back to the first time that we've seen these things, or we heard of these things, was when Pastor seen them. And it was the donkey in the cloud. And looking at the tree that the great Khan Michael had created, you know, years before that. And how Yahweh had his hand in bringing these things about. And many people at that time said, no, that's Photoshop, that's not a real picture. 
And I think we made very clear that it was recreated to what Pastor had seen. And the Kahan and the Kahana that worked with Pastor in creating this, it was very detailed. It wasn't a slap it together, this is what it is. Pastor wanted it created to the way that he remembered it. And a lot of time and attention was put into these things. Now, many people had said that, well, you know, no, nah, it just don't exist. And then remember, people actually started taking pictures of the actual clouds. They were actually getting pictures of the clouds. Let me get into uh, some of the actual pictures of clouds that were taken. If everyone remembers this one, this was of the homestead. And if you remember this face right here, can everyone see the eye and the hair? We brought this out Passover a while back. And you had the picture of the woman, and you had Pastor's face right here very clearly. And that was a picture of the actual cloud that was taken. Remember this one of the actual cloud that was taken that was brought by the great Khan Yeshua of the man having his feet washed by the woman. In great detail, these things were explained during the Feast of Passover of last year. And then, of course, we had this one, which was this last feast, or the, excuse me, it was Passover, that had the word ruby clearly above it. And, of course, the translation was brought to what these things mean. And the translation coming from the dates and the numbers and all the information that went together. And if you remember, the great Khan Benjamin brought the information on this, and it said that with everything put together, and remember the three sevens that were still being brought, it was a great golden feast held to Yahweh, and remember the translation was Yahweh will have seven works and seven times they will be brought to this world by seven Maliks. During the golden feast of Passover, a seed of Abraham named Yahshua will be made king and the one named branch will take his place. Now that was before that nebula was seen in the clouds, which once again was this nebula right here, the horse head nebula. And once again, very clearly being seen. Uh, and, and there's so much detail here to pastor, it's mind-blowing. I'll be the first one to admit, it looks like that if, if we were going to Photoshop it, that would be the way it would look. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but like the great Khan Benjamin said, we don't have access to things like that. And Yahweh doesn't Photoshop his work. He always sends messages. But why this nebula? What did it mean? Did it have anything to do with us? Could it have anything to do with us? How far-fetched have we become in these last days? That's what some have said. Well, remember in Zechariah, it shows that there is a man removing these filthy garments from Yahshua. These filthy garments that have been placed on to Yahshua by this world. This lawless living, uh, you don't have to... Listen to those old laws given by Moshe or Abel or whoever gave those things. You just got to believe. And that's all you have to do. But this nebula is clearly showing us two systems. Two completely different systems. Two men working together against another system. Now turn over to a very familiar scripture in his first Shachanon chapter 3 and verse 4. 3, 4, and then we're going to go to 7 and 8. But it's very important that we start putting these things together. For example, go through the sanctuary and ask, what is self-control? Everyone could probably tell you on page 4 that it will tell you that self-control is the foundation of all moral behavior. That's what they'll tell you. But what is self-control? Where does it come from? How much does the peaceful solution tie into the laws of Yahweh? Well, it is the laws of Yahweh. And you should, we should all understand that to have self-control, which is the foundation of all moral character, we know that the foundation of the house of Yahweh and the teachings of the house of Yahweh is based upon the law and the prophets. Therefore, to have self-control, you must have your faith, your character must be based on the teachings of the law and the prophets. That is the foundation of a positive moral character. And that's what the house of Yahweh brings forth. Now, we all know that in 1 Yachanan chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Yes, these laws that were brought forth from the beginning. In verse 7, little children. Remember, little children, that's each and every one of us that's coming to this house, this great house. Let no man deceive you. 
Uh, let no man, woman, queer, uh, false judge, whoever, put whatever you want to put in there. Let no priest from the Catholic Church, let no one deceive you. And remember Revelations 12, 9. You should have that already written in your book of Yahweh. Revelations 12, 9. Satan deceives the whole world. When it says let no man deceive you, that's this other system. Don't let someone come in from this other system and deceive you into believing that this seventh Malak is wrong. Don't give ear to it. When he comes before you and he shows you the things in these clouds and the priests come and bring these things in the clouds, stand by it. You either stand with the seventh Malak or you stand against the seventh Malak. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. Now, it says, he who commits sin, remember, this sin is the breaking of the law, the speaking against the work, the not standing in the house, the not supporting of this great work in these last days. It's of the devil. It's of this system that has been placing these filthy garments on Yahshua for years. For over 2,000 years, they've been placing these filthy garments on him, making him look like a lawless person. This man was perfected by the law, but you don't have to do it anymore. The statements themselves are confusing. But not only that, many have left, gone astray in these last days, tickling the ears of many here. Telling them, you know, those clouds, you know, that was the line right there. I, that was it. That drew the line. I, I, I've listened to it for years, and the clouds, I just can't get it. And you tend to wonder, with pictures like the nebula, how much more could a person ask for? You know, one person I know made the comment, well, if you're the priest of the house of Yahweh, raise the dead. We're trying, but you won't listen. We actually are. And it, it would be a lot easier to go over to the cemetery and raise a dead person from the ground that died in Yahweh's work than to try to teach a rebellious heart. It's not possible. Yahweh said it's not possible to teach someone who's rebellious. Turn over to Yachanan 844. Once again, very familiar scriptures, but we want to make sure we get this in our mind. Yachanan 844. These people that tickle the ears, and, and many of these people who see the house of Yahweh, and of course it's referred to as a cult, many see it that way, and they're, they're seeing it that way through, once again, the filthy garments that was placed on Yahshua Messiah. When they speak against pastor, when they say these derogatory things against pastor, he's only teaching what Yahshua taught. And these derogatory things they put upon him, they're actually speaking them against Yahshua, and he's telling them, no, you're wrong. This is what the Savior taught. Remember, peace, love, and joy. Only the house of Yahweh offers all three. But in 844 it says, and these are for those who would speak, who would think to speak against the work. Speak against the supervisor. Speak against anything brought across his podium or endorsed by the house of Yahweh. You are of your teacher who is Satan, the devil. And whatever she who is your teacher desires, you will do. Yes, you have become a follower of Satan. You are a servant to whom you obey. Through your works, you show who you obey, who we obey. She was a murderer from the beginning. Yes, she went and said, Eve, did you always say that? Come on out here, let me show you the fun we're having. Fun. I wonder what time Eve had to look and say, are we having fun yet? Because it's fun, there's no fun in this world. It's death, dying, destruction. The endorsing of abominations by a judicious system that's supposed to stand for laws to protect its people. You know, we have, and I don't, I don't mean derogatory when I, when I mention the political leaders, the members that sit on the Supreme Court. They're very intelligent men in certain areas, but when it comes to character and what people need to have a joyous life free of disease, they're very ignorant to that. And that's just a fact. But if they're willing to receive guidance, well, they won't be one of these who give in. And, they, of course, they give in to murder. And they give in to the lies and the hanging of these filthy garments on Yahshua and also condemning the seventh Malik. And remember, it says, she was a murderer from the beginning and remained not in the truth because there was no truth in her. No, she let her mind become corrupted. One of the biggest deceptions in these last days is someone thinks when someone falls away, they've totally lost their mind. 
You know, they, they just, they couldn't see it no more. The picture's gone. And that's not true. They let the smallest of things creep in, and then they start seeing it another way. Well, you know, maybe, maybe he is wrong. Maybe, maybe that's not right. Well, why am I even here? I didn't, really, I didn't want to be here to begin with. And then they leave still knowing they're going to burn in hell. And you have many on the outside that will tickle your ears and, and encourage you. Come see the fun. That fun is going to come to a big nuclear explosion very soon. And Yahweh is showing us with Yahshua, our high priest, through the seventh Malik, through these clouds, what is taking place. But once again, she speaks her words because she is a liar. And everyone who comes against Yahweh's house, of course, is a liar. Turn over to Acts, Acts chapter 7, in verse 51 through 53. Once again, remember Daniel said that those who, who did not believe, they would not have understanding. Those who rebelled would have no understanding. They would not believe. They wouldn't know what's being brought forth. And remember what Shaul spoke of, that the unbelievers, remember they resisted the Holy Spirit and was said, you stiff neck or Stephen's, excuse me, Stephen's address, you stiff neck, stubborn, and uncircumcised in heart. And ear, remember the thoughts, the things that come through your ears, you speak these words, they go through, they create feelings, and of course there's actions, and, and that's a subject in itself with much to be brought on. It says, you do always resist spirit holy, just as your fathers did. You resist the teaching of this Malak that's been set. You resist the things being brought from Yahweh's house. That's the resistance. In verse 52, it says, Which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? And they have slain those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you have now become the betrayers and murderers. Yet you're placing these filthy garments on him. You have received the law as it was ordained and delivered by Malachim, but have not kept it or have not kept it. You can put by the seventh Malak there. You have not accepted these teachings by the seventh Malak. Yahweh, you know, when we stand on the sea of glass, and, and sometimes I think we lose sight of that with these clouds and we see this coming, we, we really anticipate the kingdom, we, we, we say we anticipate nuclear war. Remember what comes with that is our judgment. We are soon to be judged for what we do and how we act, how much we stood behind the seventh Malak, how much effort we put into overcoming and becoming teachers of righteousness. Look over to Titus, Titus. Uh, Titus chapter 1, that's the book I always have to hunt and hunt and hunt. Titus chapter 1, it's found on page 941. Found on page 941. And look at verse 15, and it says, To the clean all things are clean. Why? Because they're keeping the laws of Yahweh. To those who are in Yahweh's house, who are practicing Yahweh's laws, who are adhering to the seventh Malak instructions, all things are clean. They don't seek those things which are in the world. But to the defiled and unfaithful, nothing is clean, for even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess they know Yahweh, but by their works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and to every righteous work reprobate. And remember, write down in your notes Romans chapter 1 and verses 21 through 24, where Yahweh turned them over to become reprobates, because they would not, remember, pastor said they did not glorify Yahweh when they were here in the teachings. They didn't glorify him. Now, some very interesting facts about this nebula as it was seen. The nebula was first seen by a woman named Wilhelmina Fleming in 1888. Now, if you remember, that was one year before the land run of 1889, which, of course, established the unassigned lands as they were claimed when they were divided out. It was seen, that nebula was seen 125 years ago, and, of course, the land run was 124 years ago. It's a very interesting fact. Remember the cloud that was seen where Ruby was above the head of the man with the crown? And that was this picture right here that had the word ruby. And I'm not sure how much it shows up on your screen. But anybody that wants to see these things, uh, you're more than welcome to come up. We'll show them at any time. Remember that word ruby. 
124 years after the land run of 1889, and uh, some of these things are amazing the way they work out. Remember the word ruby was seen. Hebrew word 124. That is redness, or redness, that is ruby. Garnet or something, red gem. But it clearly says ruby. Remember what ruby, what ruby is. In fact, let me read it from Yukiski real quick. Ruby, once again, is to submit to Yahweh and all of those who are over you. That was what the stone represented to the breastplate. To submit to Yahweh and all those who are over you. Is it a coincidence that 124 years later that a cloud would appear with the word ruby above its head? Is that a coincidence? Well, remember the cloud was seen 125 years ago in 1888. And when it was seen, of course, infrared was used to see the in-depths of the cloud and the definition of the cloud. And of course, as the great Tom Benjamin brought, it's red. Well, 125 means reddish. 125 years ago, the Hebrew word actually means reddish. Now, remember 1889. That's when the land run took place, 1889. If you look, this is the Brown Driver and Brig, and of course this is word 1889. Now, if you look in here, it will tell you that it could also represent of the name of a war horse in the battle. The name of a war horse in the battle. And that's 1889. Remember the ends of the earth. Remember uh, how Yahweh hid Pastor from Satan. Remember all the Jews that were destroyed. And he hid him at the ends of the earth. And the Hebrew word for 1889 also translates to aha. Like surprise. Like I gotcha. You thought you had him, but you didn't. I protected him, and he has been preserved to do this work. Now, are these things coincidence? I don't see how these things could be coincidence at all. I don't see how any of these things that Yahweh has brought us, I think it's a plan that is coming to pass for anyone in these last days who desires to be part of this work. There's so much detail. Praise Yahweh. You know, when pastors said many times that uh, when you see his face in the clouds, you see the work of Yahweh. He represents the work of Yahweh. Everyone in this work. But when we see the opposition in the clouds, they represent everyone who stands against this work, who does not stand for the seventh mallet, who stands against the seventh mallet, who will not be quick to follow the instructions of the seventh mallet. We have to remember, we cannot let mother, father, brother, sister, wife, aunt, uncle, no one can cause us to stumble from this goal that is so close within our grasp. It's right within our grasp. You know, many would say, Pastor said we could stop all wars in Egypt in 30 days. To everyone here, it should have been, if I don't know how, I need to find out how right now. I need to really find out how we can stop war in 30 days. And, and we do have the instructions and the information to begin this process. We do. Now, I know there's some out there that said stop war in 30 days is ridiculous. How fast can you start a war? If you remember back to September the 11th of 2001, many people were on their day that morning, not a thought in the world. Within 24 hours, there was a nation raging against a religion of Muslims ready to devour and bomb and kill every country there was because of what we heard across the media that was delivered in a non-stop media broadcast. It went on for days. The thing that we lack here in, in our great nation and around this world, as a great comment was saying this morning, is respect. Respecting our fellow man. And believing we have the ability to do what Yahweh has said we can do. It's all about choices. We can educate in war, we can educate in peace. It's our choice, and Yahweh wants us to choose. We can choose to believe what's being shown in the clouds, or we can resist it. Turn over to Eob for my last scripture, to Eob chapter 28. Eob chapter 28. 
In verse 12, Job chapter 28, verse 12, it's found on page 426. It says, but wisdom, where can it be found? Where is this place of understanding? And of course, everybody, Deuteronomy 12, 5 should come to everyone's mind, where it tells us to search out the place where Yahweh chooses to establish his name. Look down to verse 20. Wisdom, where does it come from? Oh, where is the place of understanding? Is it hidden from the eyes of all living? And is it concealed from the birds of the air? Look down to verse 23. Yahweh understands the way to it, and he alone is familiar with its place. He alone is familiar with its place. When he viewed the ends of the earth and saw everything under the heaven, remember what the ends of the earth are? When he viewed the birth of this last day's work, because that's what it was with the birth of the seventh Malak, was the birth of this work at the ends of the earth. When he viewed it, when he established the allotted weight for the wind, and of course melted out the waters by measure, when he made a decree for rain and the path for the lightning bolt, he saw wisdom and appraised it. He discerned it and tested it. Tested and proven, even down to the seventh Malak and the work in these last days. Then to mankind, Yahweh said, Behold, reverence of Yahweh, that is wisdom. And to turn from evil, that is understanding. Brothers and sisters, don't let anyone, any person, any way pull you out into telling you there's a better way out in this world. Don't let anyone put in your mind that there's peace in this world. Uh, You don't have to go out and experience the death, the disease, and the total destruction that takes place. And I can tell you firsthand, I've watched people leave, young men leave, and then they call begging to come back. It's easy to get in that gate the first time. Don't throw away the priesthood for no one or nothing. At this time, if everyone would please stand, I'd like to turn it over to the great Hans of Fania Hawkins. Hello, everyone. Please be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Last week, uh, Pastor mentioned he was talking about eating in, in worldly restaurants and how dangerous this can be. And he mentioned the Golden Corral. And, and two days later, a story broke about an employee who filmed some of what goes on in that restaurant. And, and it was kind of funny because um, I was flipping channels. It was like. 11 o'clock at night, and I, I no, normally I never watch um, David Letterman. In fact, I never did, but it came on with the top 10, and I thought, I wonder if this has something to do with the house of Yahweh. And it was uh, Golden Corral's top 10 excuses. And that was this week, right after Pastor mentions this. So th- this is no, not just a coincidence. And then we have um, the Hollywood Scoop is uh, some TV show, but it has uh, Pierce Brosnan, his, his daughter, wife, and her mother died all of the same disease which is, uh, shows what Pastor is talking about, how this affects the third and fourth generation. And then Brian Williams talks about painkillers. Now, they've gone up, they're killing 400% more women just over the last 10 years. And this story is incomplete in a certain sense because it only goes to the year 2010. But basically, um, 6,600 women in the United States die from opiate painkillers every year, which is an astonishing figure when you look at the amount of news that it gets, almost none. 17,000 people in the United States die every year. And this is 2010 figures. If you extrapolate that out to 2013, it's probably around 25,000. 38,000 people in the United States die die from drug overdoses. And most of that is is prescription drugs. And then we have the World Health Organization is uh, convening an emergency meeting about MERS. And MERS is uh, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. One of the men in there, this says the biggest fear is fear. We shouldn't have all this fear going on. But there is no fear out there. There's no one who fears these things. It's just uh, these organizations who, like the World Health Organization, who recognize the potential to wipe out all of mankind with just the wrong disease. And this goes into that. They're not sure where this is going to go yet, but it, its name is, is almost prophetic. It's the Mis- Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS. And then Chicago violence, it covers 12 killed, 70 shot during the 4th of July weekend. They're only covering this because it was an unusual number. If it was 8 killed and 60 shot, they probably wouldn't even have made the news. Um, and then um, Egypt, the, um, the Muslim Brotherhood is not satisfied with this military coup. And there's a man there that covers it perfectly. He says they keep pushing a democracy, and then they come in with military rule. It's not a democracy, it's a dem- democratorship. 
he made up that word, but it's a democratorship. In other words, that's true of all democracies. They're really dictatorships masquerading as democracies. So let's play the news. Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. And foretold by Yeshua Hawkins is exactly what took place again this past week. In Pastor Yeshua Hawkins' weekly address, he mentioned the unsanitary conditions of food establishments that do not follow the dietary laws and the laws of cleanliness found in the first five books of the Holy Scriptures. Yeshua Hawkins mentioned specifically the Golden Corral restaurant and an experience he witnessed years ago in which an employee failed to wash his hands after using the bathroom. Being appalled by this, Yeshua Hawkins notified the manager, who in turn shrugged off the concern and stated that he often hears that report. Just two days after Yeshua Hawkins mentioned the Golden Corral and warned about the eating at restaurants, a video taken by a Golden Corral employee in Port Orange, Florida, went viral on YouTube, exposing some of the disgusting food handling practices during a routine health inspection, including putting meat near the dumpsters. The video shows hamburger patties, piles of ribs, containers of gravy, and more sitting in the sun surrounded by flies. The video has received national attention and has become a topic of discussion for some well-known comedians. The Late Show with David Letterman put together a list of the top 10 Golden Corral excuses. Here they are. Number 10. You say dumpster, we say dining al fresco. Number 9. Cows are out in the sun all day. What's the difference? Number eight, this is why we're not the Platinum Corral. Number seven, we'd store food in the kitchen, but that's where we keep the trash. Number six, relax, the rats are keeping an eye on it. Number five, tired of being known as the sanitary buffet place. Number four, the flies looked hungry. Number three, Judgment impaired after eating tainted meat. Number two, the deal was, we serve $4 steaks, you don't ask any questions. And the number one Golden Corral excuse is, have you seen a corral? All joking aside, the seriousness is, Yishro Hawkins told us first and warned us of these type of practices. But that's not the only thing that Yishro Hawkins has warned us of. Pierce Brosnan, the actor who played James Bond, lost his 41-year-old daughter Charlotte to a three-year battle with ovarian cancer. Brosnan announced in a statement, Our hearts are heavy with the loss of our beautiful dear girl. We pray for her and that the cure for this wretched disease will be close at hand soon. We thank everyone for their heartfelt condolences. Pierce Brosnan's daughter Charlotte is not the only generation in the family to suffer from ovarian cancer. Charlotte's mother and grandmother both died of ovarian cancer. Also in the news this week, a spike in the number of middle-aged women who are becoming addicted to prescription pain medicine. The CDC has warned that about 6,000 women each year die from overdose. Now, between 1999 and 2010, nearly 48,000 women died from prescription painkiller overdoses. That's a staggering increase of 400%. Drug overdoses kill more women each year than motor vehicle accidents or cervical cancer. In an interview with NBC News, Suzette Lawfer said she was hooked on painkillers for 25 years after having surgery, a broken collarbone, and a stressful job. She stated that she became skillful at convincing doctors to write her a prescription. Prescription opiates now kill more people 
than heroin and, co and cocaine combined and also send more people to the emergency room than heroin and cocaine combined. Doctors believe that often women become bigger abusers and more addicted than men because they have chronic pain and go to several doctors. The CDC has urged doctors to, to seriously consider a patient's dependency risk before prescribing powerful pain meds. Prescription pain medicine is not the only killer the CDC has to worry about these days. We turn our attention to a virus newly come up, which some observers are comparing to one of the worst diseases of our time. YPN's Larry McGee has our two-part story on the outbreak of MERS in the Mideast that has many health officials up in arms and the use of arms back here in the United States, which is producing similar fears and greater destruction. Larry, some are comparing the outbreak to the SARS virus. Is this an overreach or is it a valid concern? Well, according to a study published in The Lancet and the commentary being offered by certain analysts, there is still yet more room for observation, Jeff. But the World Health Organization announced Friday that an emergency meeting will be convened to discuss the dangers of a virus newly come up, which is threatening the Middle East. MERS, or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, is a virus similar to SARS or the common cold. The World Health Organization has confirmed 79 cases since the virus emerged in September, and over half of those have resulted in death. The virus became intimidating and caught the public's attention when it developed the ability to transmit from person to person. In May, WHO Assistant Director Keiji Fukuda said that global awareness is a critical part of containing the virus. In the meantime, who is convening an emergency committee to determine if the virus presents a significant threat to world health. Based on its findings, it could advise temporary safety measures to all member nations if the virus threatens to become a pandemic. Despite the reservations of some, the consensus seems to be that MERS is definitely worth keeping an eye on, especially with the Islamic month of Ramadan approaching. Millions of Muslims are expected to make the pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina between July 9th and August 7th. And if the virus spreads among worshippers, it could trigger a mass global outbreak of the illness as infected pilgrims returning home after the pilgrimage spread the infection. Equally as infectious and even more destructive is the plague of violence claiming lives all across the country. This week, 12 dead and over 70 injured since Wednesday afternoon in Chicago. A crowd gathered to attend a vigil for one of the youngest and latest victims, five-year-old Jaden Donnell, who was shot while watching fireworks at a Southside Park. Distraught, Jaden's mother asked, what makes people think that this is okay? At any time, to take someone's life is just not okay. Speaking after a Sunday service, Governor Pat Quinn called for stronger gun laws to address the violence, a difficult solution for many to accept since the individuals perpetrating the violence seem not to have much respect for laws to begin with. For IPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Jeff, back to you. We appreciate your report, Larry. From the violence on the streets of Chicago to the violence halfway across the world, tens of thousands of Muslim Brotherhood members and their supporters gathered once again this week to protest. Their leader, President Mohamed Morsi, was elected last year democratically, and they believe the military's overthrow of their president threatens that democratic process. Now, one man at the protest said, It's a fight between democracy and dictatorship. He continued, the generals who have always been talking about democracy are not democratic. They are democtatorship. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood said this, their protest is against what they believe is a military grab for power. One spokesman for the group said, military has no role in politics. Politicians and the people through the ballot box lead the scene. Of course, the anti morzai supporters feel otherwise. They believe the military was just responding to the democratic will of the people. 
Sebastian Gorka from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies agrees. He said, although Morsi won the election, he almost immediately afterwards began to act in ways that are fundamentally unconstitutional, undemocratic, and not representative of the will of the Egyptian people. Now, whichever side the Egyptian people take, these recent protests continue to reflect the deep political divisions within the country and the challenges the intern president faces as he tries to unify the country. Well, unifying the country would not be a difficult task if the Egyptian people agreed to practice the moral principles in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Yisrael Hawkins has changed the lives of thousands who applied this character education program to their problems. From homes to schools to businesses and prisons, even countries that are bitterly opposed can all solve their conflicts through the Peaceful Solution and once and for all, stop all wars. Call or write the House of Yahweh and find out how you can solve your problems and then join them as they solve the world's problems. You can contact the House of Yahweh by writing them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them at their website at www.yahweh.com or www.yeshrahawkins.com or you can email them at info at yahweh.com and for all calls outside the United States please call the number on your screen. However you choose to contact the House Yahweh don't forget to request your free monthly newsletter or prophetic word magazine. And lastly if you would like to learn three simple steps on how all wars can be stopped go to stopallwars.org and find out how simple it can be. Don't go anywhere. Up next is Yisrael Hawkins teaching all of us true character. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thanks for watching. Everyone may be seated for a quick moment. We want to make sure, get your pens out and write this down. We want to make sure everyone understands this, okay? The picture that we showed of the man that had the crown and the word ruby above him, remember, that was given, that picture was seen, that cloud was seen, March the 31st of 2013. That was during the Passover. That was that real bright gold cloud that was seen during that Passover. Everybody was calling about it. At that time, that horsehead nebula cloud had not been taken, had the picture had not been taken of it showing the detail. They did take a picture in 2001 and it showed it being a black mass. But they did take a picture this April, which was after this cloud was seen. Remember the word ruby above the head of the man. That's when that horsehead nebula was seen. And it showed Pastor and Yahshua doing this work together. And remember that cloud on 331.13. The information that came forth from that cloud was Yahweh will have seven works and seven times they will be brought to this world by seven malachs. During the golden feast of Passover, a seed of Abraham named Yahshua will be made king and the seventh and the one named Branch will take his place. Now remember that. That was 331. The cloud was seen on 419. As I just left the stage, the great Kanye Huda grabbed me by the arm. He said, come, I want to show you something. And then in Jastro, it actually shows the word ruby means the great teacher. That's what the word ruby actually meant. It's so not this time. If everyone would please stand, I would like to introduce the greatest teacher in the world, Kahan Yezra Hawkins. Shalom, <laughs> <Good> everyone. <laughs> be seated. This is really great when NASA can, can uh, advertise for the house. <laughs> and, and the nebula, who would have thought that, that Yahweh would have put these, these uh, writings in the, in the nebula where the whole world can see from NASA, you know, what is actually 
the last day's work of Yahweh that Yahshua told us to look for, of course. Look in the clouds when you start seeing these things. Then look in the clouds and he was, he's going to write notes and give us dates and all of these things are taking place over the top of the house of Yahweh. <laughs> That's the great thing. <laughs> The uh, the news there, of course. I I hope you're paying attention to all this that uh, the great uh, Kohan Zephania put together this week. Uh, the Golden Corral. I said it first. <laughs> now the now the comedians are having a heyday. <laughs> I worked in a corral most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I waited. I waited about knee deep, and some of it went to drain, you know. It got, got, got pretty gushy. <laughs> um, the uh, people are dying of, uh, of um, brain cancer, throat cancer, uh, breast cancer, you name it. World Health Organization uh, is alarmed about this, trying to do something about it. Um, and remember Egypt now. Egypt, that was the last thing you saw. And the fighting that's going on there. Now, of course, that's prophesied, and I started on that last week because I wanted you to understand what's going on there, and, and I made the statement that, is, that Egypt is actually going to turn to Yahweh. <laughs> Well, of course, uh, 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 Moshe, if you want to turn there and read that, I know this is coming into a lot of people's minds because of the things that Yahweh shows that he will only deal with seven works. That was shown in the nebula also as the Kohan so greatly brought out. I feel sorry for the people that came in late. You really need to get that... Uh, that sermon, you know, uh, I've often expressed this, it's like a tree falling in the forest, you know, you'll never hear the sound. If you're not there to hear it, you, you'll never hear it. But Yahweh has made it possible, you know, even for those who are late, as he does for the Passover, um, you know, you can go and get it, and it's up to you to show Yahweh that you're interested in the writings that he's bringing you, and of course, uh, uh, this couldn't be any plainer that uh, Yahweh even gave the date over the top of the sanctuary. <laughs> gave the date, put the word sow for the holy garments that we were sowing at that time. You know, who could do writing in the clouds except Yahweh? The <laughs> no way. Well, here in, uh, in Amosha now, Remember, Egypt is going to be converted. It's going to turn to Yahweh. Uh, the scripture plainly shows that, and I do intend to show you. But uh, in uh, Amosha, he says, Hear the word which Yahweh, that's uh, 3 and verse 1. Hear the word which Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. I don't know if you got that or not, but read it again. If you don't understand what, you're, what he's saying here, you only. <laughs> well, he didn't say you and some more. He says you only. You only. That's plain. Plain as day. Black and white. You only have I known <laughs> of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you. That is, I will purify you. I'm going to purify you is what the word actually means. Only the house of Yahweh is bringing out these, these mistranslations so you will know what Yahweh is actually saying. Well, that takes on a whole new color when you put the word purify instead of punish. But, of course... Satan, in her great zeal to turn people away from Yahweh and the Holy Scriptures, she makes, she, she makes Yahweh appear as a cruel, vicious God who has power to uh, hit the magic wand 
uh, hit you with a magic wand and cause all kinds of sickness to enter your body. Now, this is a, the, the pattern they are taking. Whereas the scripture actually shows how to keep sickness out of your body, uh, how to have a healthy mind and a healthy body. Uh, it's not eating at Golden Corral, but uh, you won't get it there, but you can get it from the word of Yahweh if you will just study and do what he says. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. But you only have I known of all the families of the earth Therefore, I will purify you. So there's a plan made. There's a plan of Yahweh, as Yachanan says, that is going to come to pass. In the beginning was this plan, long before Amosha was written. Amosha was written in 787 BCE. But the plan in the beginning told this very thing. And I brought you so much on that in the last few few weeks. If you weren't here to get it, of course, you're dying. You're dying. You're starving yourself spiritually. And, of course, you'll be laid in the grave eternally if you don't stop this. If, if you don't keep Yahweh's Sabbaths and don't learn what Yahweh says and practice what Yahweh says, you're starving yourself spiritually and you will die an eternal death. You won't be resurrected after that well he's going to praise Yahweh he's going to purify you uh, from all your iniquity so now that that's in his plan what does that have to do with the price of eggs in Egypt look on down to seven verse seven most assuredly father Yahweh will have no work <laughs> that's another one that's plain and if you studied this scripture out like we did, we studied it out from word by word, every, uh, every dictionary, every Hebrew concordance, they agree with us 100%. This is what this scripture is saying. I got it from the King James Version before, before we ever found out here with the, with the uh, ancient books and lexicons and dictionaries, uh, before we found that out, I already knew it and had brought it out in the mark of the beast. But most assuredly, that's from inspiration of Yahweh. And Yahweh himself, praise Yahweh, Yahweh himself says, I'm the one that inspires this person. I'm going to take him by the hand. He's going to be of quick understanding. And those who want salvation... If you will pay attention, I'll put his words in your mouth and they will never depart from your mouth and you can be a servant of Yahweh forever. That's the promise he makes. Praise Yahweh. Well, most assuredly, Father Yahweh will have no work other than the work that he has prophesied in evidence by his servants, the prophets. By his servants, the prophets. Well, when, when Yahweh brought the 12 tribes out of Egypt, as I brought out last week, he actually brought them out of Christianity. Now, even a fool <laughs> that don't know anything about Scripture could study Egypt and what they're doing and compare it till today's, to today and what the, and you wouldn't even have to compare it. You'd just see what the, what the Catholic Church is teaching today. You know what they call the Coptic high priest there? Did you see that on the news? Pope. Pope. Surely, surely we would catch that. And then they said Coptics. Coptic is the Christian religion. Well, the, it was Coptics that, was, that Yahweh brought them out of. He first taught, brought them down there, t t took them into Egypt. And says, I'm going to keep you here for 450 years. And then I'm going to bring you out of this house of bondage. Well, of course, we're back in bondage again. Here is Christianity that killed history. Some historians say billions and said it could be over a trillion that Christianity has killed in wiping out Yahweh's word destroying, trying to destroy the Holy Scriptures, 
killing people for owning a copy or a manuscript. You can get all of this in history. All you have to do is look up the Crusades, look up the history of the, of the Bible, look up the history of the Bible. It will give you all of this. The Catholic Church worked to get rid of this. Well, I showed you last week how, and of course, I hope you remembered this, but Zechariah 3, one. It shows you that Satan is opposing oh, the work of Yahweh. She's, uh, she's opposing what we do today. And you can see her efforts, of course, to try to destroy mankind before the house of Yahweh is finished, but Yahweh won't allow that to be, uh, be brought about. If you look back to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, now you can get this from the King James Version too, uh, uh, as well as you can the book of Yahweh. It's just, it's just uh, uh, plainer, easier to understand uh, from the book of Yahweh. In fact, the scholars say that the book of Yahweh is the closest thing to the original of any translation on the market. If you look at verse uh, 3, the word Ashtaroth, that's a goddess. Uh, who could this be? Look on down to verse 4. You'll find, so the, the children of Israel put away the Baals, that is Lord. Lord. Well, who is Lord? <laughs> before they were rabbis, before they called themselves rabbis, you can look, look this up in, in uh, Unger's Bible Dictionary. But before they were rabbis, called themselves rabbis, they called themselves lords or pharaohs. Pharaohs. And of course, the pharaoh, when he died, he became a god. And then they deified him. How did they do that? They said he was a saint. What did they do today? What's the practice today? It was just last week in the papers that the pope said that they were going to deify John, uh, John the second, Pope John, uh, I think that was his name. How quickly their names are forgotten. <laughs> but they're going to try to remember him and they're saying you can now pray for him or, or you'll, be, you'll be able to pray to him and he can answer your prayer. If he don't answer your prayers, go to another Lord or Pope as it's called today. Unger's Bible Dictionary. If you look up the word rabbi, you will find that's where the word Lord comes from. Before that, they were called Pharaohs in Egypt. They merely brought that practice with them out of Egypt. Yahweh brought the children, the 12 tribes, out of Christianity and gave them his laws that they were breaking throughout Egypt. And, and as a result, they were suffering sickness and disease. And he says, if you keep my laws, you won't have any of the sickness and disease that you were having in Egypt. The feared diseases, and he named cancer. Well, it's plain to see we got it today, right? And the, and the movie stars are now getting it. And this is why it's advertised throughout the land now. It's finally being brought to attention. And they got a cancer day now. Well, they got a cancer god, you know, a cancer pope who encouraged it. So pray to him and see if you get your prayers answered. If you got cancer, pray to him and see how quickly he answers your prayer. But don't hold your breath. And you people out there in radio and TV land that's putting your hopes in the Catholic Church, they're bound for hell. Your scripture says, and I brought this out last week, week before last, I think every week. <laughs> every week, I bring it out a little more. The only ones that's going to have salvation, the only ones that don't belong to Satan, the devil, who is an adversary and an opposer of today's work of Yahweh, <laughs> the only one that don't belong to her is shown in 1 John, if you have a King James Version, 1 John 3, 4, verses 7 and 8. 1 John 3, verses 4, 7 and 8. And if you break these laws, now listen, listen now. His law says, be at my door on the Sabbath day. Do your work before in six days. 
but come here and do my work on the seventh day of the week. And if you don't, you sin willfully. After the knowledge of the truth has come, read Hebrews 10 and you will see it's talking about keeping the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath from sundown Friday till sundown the Sabbath is Yahweh's Sabbath. That's when you're to do his work. You're to study, you're to find a place in his house, you are to take that place and try to serve in the house and rejoice while you're doing it. Rejoice working with your brothers and your sisters at the house of Yahweh. That's the commandment. You can't find joy any other way. You can hunt the world over, you can search every nook and cranny of the world. <laughs> you, can, you can buy all the telephones, the push button gadgets there is, but you won't find joy until you come and start serving, as Yahweh said, on my Sabbath. As Yahshua said, do righteousness on my Sabbath. That's what is taught and practiced at his house. Do it at my house. Seek first his habitation. Seek first his habitation. That's the first commandment. Then go to that place and whatever you're assigned to do, do it with all your might. And if you've got a place in the house of Yahweh and you're doing it, don't seek something else. Do it with all your might, totally with all your might. And you will have a place forever in Yahweh's kingdom, which we can see is coming very soon. Okay, if you look up the word rabbi, you'll see where the word Lord comes from. Uh, and the people who are, who are praying to Lord, uh, El, Elohim, if you're praying to any of those gods or the goddesses, you're praying to a, red by, a dead rabbi or the, or the queen of heaven, the goddess, that Samuel said, put these gods away from you or Yahweh will not answer your prayers. You put them away from you. This is here in chapter 7. And, and, and uh, so in chapter 6, chapter, I mean, verse 4, verse 3, he shows this Ashtaroth, which is Easter, that they were celebrating uh, and worshiping, verse 4, the Baals, the Lords, the Gods, the Elohim, the Astaroth, the Goddess uh, Astarta, and uh, even the Abilene Reporter News showed uh, in an article uh, not too long ago that, uh, that this all traced back to the same Queen of Heaven and, and, had, and had to do with Easter. And then one of their quacky preachers came on television and said, well, it really, it really, uh, uh, in spite of where, uh, in spite of the circumstances that brought about Halloween, it's still a great time to go out and, and let your children have fun, trick or treating. The stupid jerk didn't even have sense enough to know that he was worshiping the dead rabbis the dead lords and gods, and of course, Satan herself, who is inspiring it. Yes, in spite of all of this, where it came from, go ahead and do it anyway. Well, of course, in verse 6, they repented of their sins. They didn't walk out with, their, with anger in their face and their eyes. They repented of their sins, and this was, this was given to them as great merits to Yahweh. Now, if you'll look on over to chapter, chapter 8, he says, When Samuel became old, then, of course, his sons made mistakes. And these great rabbis here, the elders, who had already set themselves up as gods and judges, they said, we want a king to judge us from now on. We want a king to rule over us. And Yahweh told Samuel in verse 7, remember this now, we're coming out of Egypt. He says, Yahweh answered Samuel and said, listen to all the words the people speak to you, for they have not rejected you, they have rejected me, that I should 
not reign over them. They didn't want Yahweh's laws any longer. They didn't want them taught. They didn't want to practice them. They openly rejected Yahweh and his law. Now, this is the group that ruled Israel. They ruled Israel. They taught Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. They're the ones that brought forth the Talmud. They brought forth the God worship, the Easter worship. And Yahweh said in Yeremia, even in my very house, even in my house, I find adultery and fornication going on. Because, because <laughs> they didn't want to obey the one sent who said, we've got to stop this. Yachanan came and said, you need to stop this. It's not right that you should have your brother's wife. It's not right. Yahshua said, if you have an eye that offends you, you should just pluck it out and throw it away rather than burn in hell. They both taught the same thing. They caught off Yachanan's head. They hung Yahshua on a stake and killed him on a stake. These are the ones now that he's talking to here. The fathers of the ones that ruled the temple that moved to Rome after they destroyed the temple. They had all the artifacts moved to Rome also. That's shown in history. Look up Titus or the Ark of Titus. If you think I'm lying, look it up. The Ark of Titus. You'll see where the artifacts of the temple went to. They're in Rome. Why would they want them? <laughs> You'll see pretty soon. Um, let me... I've, I've got an article. I've got to find it. Here it is, right here on top. Israeli minister, we should rebuild Jerusalem temple. Date, July 7, 2013. The Israeli minister, he has to give permission. They said the holdup was they had to have permission from the Israeli minister. Here's his words. They got it. They'll soon reveal what I've been telling everybody for years, that those artifacts are in Rome, the seven hills of Rome. Why, don't, why won't they just believe what the scriptures say and what history says? Okay, where were we? Here he says they don't want Yahweh to rule over them, so go ahead and let them have their gods, but tell them their kings are going to have them manufacturing weapons of war. Speaking of weapons of war, I couldn't believe it, but I don't know if you got the advertisement or not, but there was a, a bracelet, uh, all kinds of jewelry, but I noticed in particular a bracelet with, I don't know if you saw the Roman soldier and the thing that was on his wrist. But they, they made a thing to go around the wrist of a Roman soldier that had iron spikes sticking out on it. I saw this in a jewelry advertisement. Now, they're advertising that you get these iron spike jewelry. What would you use that for? Well, of course, to defend yourself. Defend yourself. <laughs> like someone don't have a, oh, a longer pole to hit you with. Uh, or maybe a gun to shoot you with. You, you, you know, you see where defense comes from, where retaliation comes from. Well, of course, the Roman soldier, he could, he could hit you back and forth with these spikes that stuck out on this bracelet or leather cuff that he had and now it's being sold to women as jewelry to defend themselves I guess <laughs> anyway don't look like a Roman soldier don't let anyone in the house tell them if you see that uh, around tell them don't be a Roman soldier don't don't represent war and fighting uh, represent peace the peaceful solution character education if you look at the team down here, the, the, the motorhomes, 
uh, we got stop all wars. Retaliation is not a way to stop war. Uh, defend yourself. Don't be putting yourself out there where you'll have to defend yourself against goops like this. Keep yourself safe and away from gooks like that. Try to, try to do what the house of Yahweh tells you to do and you won't be needing guns or swords to fight with out there because you won't be out there. <laughs> uh, was it the Psalms or Proverbs that said, uh, uh, said uh, a, a wise man sees danger and flees? Well, he didn't mean to go there and see it and run back. He, he means to avoid it. Avoid those people. Don't make them your friends. Don't have anything to do with them. Leave them alone. Let us reach them with the message. Let Yahweh reach them with inspiration. And then we will deal with them. They'll be more suitable at that time. Well, here now we see, let's turn over to Isaiah. Because Isaiah was dealing with these, with this family of gods and lords here in Isaiah 65. And you can see what they brought from Egypt with them. Isaiah 65, still the same worship of Satan, the same breaking, uh, refusing, rebelling against the laws of Yahweh as Nimrod, the Nimrod system shows. In Isaiah 65 and verse 4, he says, Who assemble and spend nights keeping... We just saw Easter now. Well, here you see Halloween. Memorials to the dead. You know, they had a, a memorial to every, every pope that died, and they got to be so many of those saints, <laughs> Satan saints, they run out of days. So they had to pick one day. Now, history shows you this. Look up the history of this, and you'll see that they finally chose one day, and it's called All Saints Day or Halloween. All Saints Day. Well, who were the saints? They were the rabbis. They were the pharaohs before the rabbis. Then they were the rabbis, and now they're called popes. They keep changing their names, but a rose by any other name or a skunk by any other name is still a skunk. Well, here you see that they're, that what they're doing. This gives them away. Uh, uh, who say, stand by yourself, do not come by me, I'm holy. This is exactly what they're saying. They're saying they have set themselves apart as holy. They, not Yahweh. Yahweh says you have to keep the Sabbath. Then you'll know that it's he that sets you apart. As gold, as gold... <laughs> we'll see that word a little bit later. Look at, look at chapter 66. Now, remember, they eat swine's flesh. You see that? They follow the priest who eats swine's flesh. Probably many of them at the Golden Corral. 66 and verse 17, if you notice this closely, they're all going to be consumed together. All going to be consumed together. These are the ones that are snarling up their nose at this teaching. If you look on over, these are the ones that, that came out of Egypt and brought their doctrines with them from Egypt. And, and, and Uremia plainly said this. They've turned back to Egypt. They turned back to Christianity. That's what they meant. He brought them out of Christianity. They wanted to go back and start serving the queen of heaven again. Well, here in Uremia now 10 and 1 through 5, we see Christmas. This too was celebrated long before the Savior. Any fool could look this up in a dictionary or a, uh, 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 an encyclopedia and see that it, that it was celebrated long before A.D. <laughs> when the Savior died. The Christmas tree. One cuts the tree out of the forest. You go to Walmart now and they have it done for you. It's already standing there. It's already got the hammer and nails with the thing tacked on it so it won't fall over. 
And then they decorate it with silver and gold. Is that not what they do today? They decorate it with silver and gold. Well, this is, of course, the queen of heaven. Deceive the whole world as, uh, as Revelations 12, 9. And in, in, and in chapter 44 now of Uremia, you see this spoken of here. Chapter 44. Chapter 44. And, and, uh, and look at verse uh, 15. Then all the men, this is Uremia, or Jeremiah, if you have a King James Version, then all the men who knew that their wives were burning incense to hinder gods, together with all the women who stood by, a great multitude in all, and all the people who lived in the land of Egypt, answered Jeremiah, saying, Concerning the word that you have spoken to us in the name of Yahweh, we will not listen to you. The same thing they said to Samuel. Instead, we will certainly do what we have vowed to do. We will burn incense to the queen of heaven. Well, who is this queen of heaven? <laughs> look, at, uh, look at verse... Uh, yeah, we, we, we read that. Let's go on. This queen of heaven. This is the wife. Look back to Isaiah now, 14. The queen of heaven that they're speaking of here. This is the wife of Yahweh. The wife of Yahweh. Hillel. Chapter 14 and look at verse 12. How have you fallen from heaven? Oh, she was in heaven. How have you fallen? This is also means how did they find the guilty verdict? This is Isaiah 14. And now verse 12. How did, was you found guilty of this? What is the evidence that, that, that they caused that caused you to be classified as one who is not proper for this place? How have you fallen from heaven, O Hillel? Hillel, Lucifer. And that also includes Venus. Child of the light, child of the light. Yes, she was once child of the light. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nations. Who is it that's weakening the nations right now? Who's, who's causing the uproar in Egypt right now? Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, all of these countries. Who's behind this? Well, of course, Satan works through the Catholic Church, the little horn. It's never changed. I'll bring that out clear later. But look at verse 13. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend above the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of Yahweh. I will set in the highest place on the holy mountain of the congregation, raising herself, see, above Yahweh here. Look, look back to, hold your place there. And go back to Yekishka again, 28. Yekishka 28. Hold, hold your place in Isaiah. Yekishka 28. Verse 14. Yekishka 28, verse 14. Found on page 649, if that will help. Remember what we read here now. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend above the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of Yahweh. Stars of Yahweh. Well, that's another sermon. I will set in the highest place on the holy mountain of the congregation. I will sit in the house of Yahweh, is what she is saying. And she did. Under the little horn. In verse, verse 14 now of Isaiah, uh, Yekishka 28, you were the guardian cherub. You were. Past tense. You, you failed. 
So your position is gone. And I married you on the holy mountain of Yahweh, that is in the house of Yahweh. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Who in the world are the stones of fire? <laughs> well, of course, you look up stones that tell you, but I'll bring it out later. I don't have time right now, but, but look on down to verse 16. By the multitude of your merchandise, merchandise, push buttons. Think of this, things that draw people's minds away from study, the way from reading the scriptures. Or, or the book of Israel, the books of Israel, or listening to the tapes, the sermons, getting them down in your head to where you could actually teach thee. You came here to be a teacher. If you got the position of training for a teacher, put everything you got into it. Don't even think about anything else. Just get your mind on that subject and how to push it forward. You see the mistakes we're making? Well, go talk to a supervisor. Go talk to your counselor and say, look, I can, I can help here in this area right here. We can do this and it'll make it run much smoother. We need your help. We want your help. We want your input. Yes. <laughs> By the multitude of your merchandise, they have filled the midst of you with violence. Well, You'll be making weapons of war. <laughs> be wearing them around your neck and your, and your wrist and, and, and uh, carrying them in your hands. And, and you have sinned. He's talking about Hillel now, the one he married, that's walking in the, in the midst of the stones of fire, walking among you. Yes, you are the stones. <laughs> <laughs> and Yahweh's placing you one by one in his house, as the other prophets show, but we'll get into that in detail too. By the multitude of your merchandise, they have filled the midst of you with violence, and you, ha you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain. Therefore, you will be cast out of the mountain, the house of Yahweh, and Anne will destroy you from, that is, you will be taken out, destroyed from the mist of the stones. The mist of the stones, that's you. <laughs> you, the mist of the stones. Of fire, O guardian cherub. Uh, let me see, that was uh, uh, verse 16. Uh, Married you, 16. Oh, I just noticed I'm out of time. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll start the, um, we will start the leaving our pictures. We got some pictures to take. So we'll start that a little bit later. I'm, I've run over 15 minutes. And uh, <laughs> so we'll start the picture taking 15 minutes. We'll go, go eat the, uh, the Sabbath is such a blessing, a blessing. If you haven't experienced the way the Sabbaths were kept at the house of Yahweh back in Yahshua's time, you need to experience it by getting here early. Get here early on the Sabbath day and, uh, and, and see the wonderful things that the servants of Yahweh has put out for you. Next week, there's a real treat coming. Don't miss it, but you'll have to get here early or you, like, I've seen people. I've seen people that before the Sabbath was uh, kept as uh, it should be, I've seen people dragging in here late and, uh, and dreading every moment of it. But if you'll get here early and start experiencing this joy with everyone else, then I won't have to coax you anymore. You'll be here on time to hear the sermon too and get the spiritual food. <laughs> May Yahweh bless you and I'll turn the services back to the next speaker. I love you! I love you. <laughs>